Hey guys, my name is Frank, and this is the Pothon Programming Video Log, part 5.5 of how to write a tile-based platforming game in pure HTML5 and JavaScript. Before I go any further with this series, I want to address something called tunneling. It presents major problems for any physics engine, and tile-based engines are no exception. Tunneling is sure to affect you particularly if you are writing your own physics engine, so stay tuned while I talk about how to overcome this pesky glitch. In this video, I'm going to show you what tunneling looks like, how it works, and how to stop it. If you have any questions, put them in the comments section. If you learned something, of course, give this video a like and subscribe so you don't miss my next video. Alright, so let's take a look at what tunneling actually looks like. So this is the part 5 example program, and I haven't changed any of the code since part 5, but I just want to show you this one glitch that happens underneath this T-shaped structure of tiles. When I am running into this tile from the right, so I'm pressing down on the left key and I jump, I actually pass into the tile. Now, I can actually jump down below the tiles and walk around because of the nature of my tile-based collision code, but obviously you don't want that to happen. This actually isn't a problem with the collision code itself. This is just a problem with tunneling, and it seems to happen just in this one scenario. So in order to show you guys better what's actually happening, first I'm going to explain what tunneling is, just using my mouse pointer as an example, and then I'm going to show you in slow motion when I, I slow this game down, I'm going to show you what's actually happening with the player and why tunneling is happening in this particular instance. So tunneling is when the object moves too far in one frame to actually collide with a collision shape. So let's say that this tile is going to be my collision shape and the mouse pointer is going to be my object. So this is frame one. On frame one, my object is right here where the mouse pointer is. And on frame two, I'm going to move my object a little bit to the left. So this is frame one. This is frame two. My object has moved about 16 pixels to the left. Now, this is okay because I'm not moving more than one tile space. I'm actually going to be over top of this tile space. It's going to detect that I'm colliding with it, and it's going to move the mouse out of the collision and put it back into an empty tile space. That's how it should work. Tunneling happens when the mouse moves much farther than one tile space, or 16 pixels in this case, over the course of one frame. So if this is frame one, and I move in frame two all the way to here, what's happening is I'm jumping right from here all the way to here, and I'm never detecting a collision with that tile because I'm never landing in it. So tunneling is basically just moving a player object or any object too quickly to detect collision with a stationary collision object. So now that you kind of understand what tunneling is, let me slow this down and show you in action what the tunneling looks like with the player character. So I'm going to save my code. I'm going to set the frame rate to one frame per second. That's going to slow things down a lot. And I'm going to refresh. Now, as you can see, things are really, really slow. So I'm going to run over here into the corner and it's going to take a while. So just bear with me, but I'm going to show you this glitch in as slow motion as I think it should be. I don't want to go any slower than this or it would take forever. So here I am, I'm standing next to the tile, I'm going to press up and I'm just going to jump straight up. So I jumped up and immediately this tile up here resolves collision and throws me right back down below it. But if I jump up while I'm pressing the left key, I jump up and I move slightly to the left. Now that's when the tunneling occurs. So the tunneling isn't actually happening on this tile right here, it's actually it's kind of a special case, but I'll show you why. So I'm going to run back out here, and I'm just going to jump up. The tunneling is actually happening when I jump, because the player character is moving about 20 pixels upwards as soon as I start jumping. And you'll be able to see that when I jump here in a moment. So I could actually get this thing to comply. It's just moving so slowly. All right, so I'm going to jump and just take note of where this player actually moves to when I jump. So this is the top of the player right here. This would be 16 pixels from the ground right here. When I press the jump key, immediately my player is above that 16 pixels. His feet were about right here, and he clearly moves more than 16 pixels, which is our tile space. So if he can potentially move past one full tile space without stopping in it, he can tunnel. Because tunneling is basically when on frame one, 
we're out of collision. On frame two, we jump over a collision object and never touch it. So what's happening here is when he jumps, imagine what happens if he were standing right here. He's going to jump up. On the first frame, His the top of his hitbox is actually going to be over top of this tile, and the bottom of his hitbox is going to be inside of this tile. So what's happening is when he jumps and he's standing here, he's going to jump up. He's not even going to have a chance to collide with this tile because the top two corners that I'm checking on his hitbox are over top of this tile even. Uh, the only reason collision happens on this tile is because his two bottom feet or his two bottom corners are inside of this tile. And he can still technically move to the left while he's in this tile because collision is only going to happen in this tile with the bottom side of the tile. And it does. When I'm standing underneath this tile, it does do collision, but just on the bottom side. I can still move to the left. So when I jump up underneath this tile... I'm going to jump, I'm going to hit my head on the bottom, and it's going to send me right back down again. But remember, I'm jumping 20 pixels high, so what's going to happen is just my feet are going to collide with this. When I jump, I'm actually going to move up here, then it's going to place me back down there, and I can still move over to the left. So when I jump up and press left, I'm actually going to be up here, and I'm going to fall back down into this tile on the wrong side of the collision boundary. So that's what tunneling is, and there's a really easy way to fix it. If I come in here and I set this back to, let's see, 30 frames a second, that ought to do. Let's see what that looks like. 30 frames a second, things are back to normal. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to come out here and I'm going to change the speed at which he jumps, and that's actually going to fix everything. So if I can find where that is, oh, it's actually in the game object here. Let's see, jump. I'm actually setting jump. Whenever he jumps, I call this function, and it moves him 20 pixels up. It sets his y velocity to negative 20 pixels. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it to negative 15 pixels. And that's going to prevent him from ever moving more than one tile space. And actually, I'm going to set this back to one frame so you guys can see that in action as well. Let's go back to one frame per second, refresh, and... Now we're going to zoom in and take a closer look at this guy jumping. So this is what 16 pixels looks like when he jumps. As you can see, his bottom feet are no longer way up here on that first frame. On that first frame, they're down here. So he'll still end up colliding with this tile right here. So when I move back into collision, and I'm going to speed things up for this. Set it back to 30 frames a second. Save. Come over here. Refresh my page. And... Now, tunneling can no longer happen. So collision is going to happen as I expect it to. So that is the problem. And I guess I kind of showed you how to fix it in the first part, but I'll go into more detail on how to fix it in the next part. Okay, so we just looked at part 5's example program where we had this glitch where, actually I fixed it, but very fresh, we had this glitch. And I'm going to leave that in, actually. So if you ever check out part 5, that glitch is going to be left in there, but... Now I want to show you a better way to fix it, and this is a sneak peek, if you will, at part 6, where I actually did fix this problem. So here's the same exact tile structure, same scenario in part 6, without the glitch. Now how I did this was I basically just clamped his movement velocity to never exceed 16 pixels or one tile space. Now, if you just reduce the amount of velocity that he jumps at, it can cause problems, so... For instance, here, I'm going to take a look at part 5 again. Here's part 5. I can jump up above this tile if I have a, a Y velocity of negative 20 pixels per frame when I jump. So obviously, if I reduce this to 15 and I save, <coughs> it's going to eliminate the possibility of tunneling. That's great. But now I can't jump up on my platforms anymore. So how do I fix this? Well, the way to fix it is to go ahead and change your gravity and friction. At least that's one way to fix it. So I'm going to save that so it's back the way it was. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to take a look at the code. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to take a look at the code inside of part 6. So in part 6, I'm still using a velocity of negative 15 when I jump. The only difference is now I'm clamping my movement velocity when I update the player's position. So basically to do that, I'm just saying 
if the absolute value of the player's x velocity or y velocity is greater than some max velocity and that's going to be 16 or 15 basically our tile size or maybe one less just to be safe if it's greater than that then we're going to set our velocity to the max velocity and actually this code is wrong because i don't want to change the sign of my velocity i just want to change the amount of my velocity so but you get the idea part six is still in development basically what you want to do is you want to clamp your movement speed and to get the same jump height with the different y velocity what you do is you just reduce gravity and friction so here is what a jump looks like in part five as you can see he jumps a lot faster it's kind of almost too quick so this is almost an improvement for visuals as well and this is part six where i've kind of changed it up so he can have a clamped velocity and he just moves a little more smoothly if you look at it it's a little more smooth here's part five again jumps really far really fast it's a little bit too quick part six a little more smooth hopefully you can pick that up with my my video recorder here because sometimes it doesn't quite match the frame rate of the game when it's recording so basically what you want to do to fix tunneling is you want to clamp your jump speed so the amount of velocity that you apply to a jump and that's going to be where a lot of your velocity comes into play high velocities when you're jumping that's going to be a thing you want to clamp it to an amount that's less than one tile space then in order to get the height of the jump that you want you're going to have to reduce uh, gravity and friction so for me i came in when i define the world object what i do is i just have gravity and friction defined here so for example friction if i change the value of friction to say 0 0.9 0 0.99 that's going to be really low friction so if i come over here and refresh now i'm going to have really really low friction and as you can see i'm just moving really fast all over the place jump really far really fast because there's no friction so i don't want that but that's basically how you fix tunneling you just basically have to clamp your velocity to a certain speed and to get a the jump height that you want you just mess with friction and gravity and that's gonna do it for tunneling in this video i talked a bit about tunneling and how to solve it of course there are more ways to fix tunneling but simply restricting movement speed is an easy way to fix the problem without having to write any complex collision detection code and it will actually lend itself to smoother looking animations because objects will cover less distance between frames I made this video kind of quickly, so if you have any questions, be sure to ask in the comments section and definitely research tunneling on your own, as this problem has been tackled many times before and there's plenty of documentation out there on how to fix it. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.